So now the gate posts are in. Time to make the gates. I've got to make them as cheap as possible, like I said. I've got a choice. Use Scant, which is this stuff. It's the cheapest. Next up is PSE actually. But I could have used this stuff, which is tantalized eased edge scant. It's a bit soft. You can see the grain is quite wide. So you get a bit of shrinkage. And the amount of joints and cuts that I've got to make on these gates, it's a bit pointless spending the extra money for that. So I'm going with this, which is Clasters Redwood. It's not the best, but it's a bit better quality. Here I've got one, two, three, four for the styles to go up either side. Get rid of that. A piece for the heads. I have to buy these in the full length. And some inch and a half stuff for the rails. And there's loads of matchboard in the van. I made quite a few of these gates over the years. I just blather them with clear treatment. And I saw some the other day that I made five, six years ago. And they look quite good still. As long as wood can dry out, they can last for years as long as, they, as long as they're not constantly damp. The joints, I like to mortise and tenon them. But just to speed it up on this, and as part of a test, I've done quite a lot of work for these people, so I can experiment a fraction. I'm going to use the domino and cut mortises into each piece, and then use a, like a floating tenon. As long as it's glued and pinned, it's, it's almost the same thing. And the table saw, I've sort of fixed it. I made a new pin for the in there. And I freed up the rise and fall. I bought a new welder. It, like I say, it's sort of fixed. It goes up and down now, but it's, it's not right. That's another story. At least I can use it now. I need to shorten this bar. But the this handle was always too far under, you know, I was reaching under so I wanted it a bit longer, but I've got to shorten it. And I've got to make a whatever you call it. A, a steel piece to go there, that's brass. And I had to drill it out because the thread was just cutting into it. This is stainless stainless steel bar. Like I say, at least it goes up. It's a bit stiff in the middle there. And I think that's what's what's damaged the thread in the first place, because that's where it was broken. Then when you get past there. I can use it now at least. I'll get a blade back in it. I'm just going to cut all the timbers for the doors. I've got my technical drawer in here. Height and width, that's all I've got. And normally, imagine that's the top rail. I'd let these legs go through. And then 45 the top. Yeah, imagine that. That's the top rail. That gives plenty of meat for this tenon to you know, to hold on to haunch sort of thing. You know, if I cut it off like that, only leaves that little bit of wood for the tenon to push against. But, what I want to do on these doors is I want them pretty, pretty much flush at the top. I want the top rail to, you know, finish flush and I don't want to finish the doors like that. You know, rail style here, top rail. So what I'm thinking of doing is that it also gives a bit more weather protection because when they're flying through like that, rain can sit on the top. So just done a couple of tests. And that is a combination of using first and second stop. So that's second stop. Then first stop in the hole does the middle. Then second stop in the hole does the far end. See, that's the second stop, and then the second stop again.
puts me there I need to take that piece out of the middle that's why I got to use the first stop again but I think if I have that in my head then that that should be enough meat there here yeah, I'm done that one I'll do that one so if that's the top bale I think there's enough meat there to keep that tenon in place and this will be me style basically like that then I can chamfer the top of this a little bit let the water run off alright so back to me technical drawing here I've got 2 meters 65 high I'm going to give the top 20 mil and I want at least 2 inch at the bottom so that's 70 mil off that gives me 90.95 and 16.75 need to work that out I need a 900 mil door so 16.75 minus 900 gives me 7.75 so that'll be that second door and 900 and I'm going to give it at least at least five mil down either side and down the middle so I'll work that out possibly even close to 10 mil so I've got 775 and 900 and what I've done is just taken 10 mil off that and 10 mil off that if I had five mil gaps that'd be 15 mil but if I take 10 mil off each of those that's 20 mil that should be enough so 890 765 that's the plan and if I prefer them very slightly bigger so if I've got to take you know three or four mil off here and there these are outside gates and they're gonna swell up so I need to make enough allowance for that okay 1995 minus the head gives me 1900 I'll cut far at that this is the first one off the rack and 1995 is there 1900s there you see I've got knots here but I'm down here that's clean and at this end clean so I'll square it just a little bit further than that and when I flip it around I'll clean that end up when I cut it to length you don't really want these sort of things knots and what have you where you're going to be making your joints if this was only just long enough I'd trim that end off maybe put the joint there ignore that one so, same for heads I've got a knot there there's another little knot in the end there so I'll trim that off 890 I want this is the centre bark pith if you look at the end the rings will go like that it's not normally nice to have that it's a bit softer but 890 there lands pretty much on a knot so I'll shuffle all my joints up and I'll cut it off about there and I should have a nice clean piece there and cut the big ones first if you cock it up you can always cut them down for the smaller ones right so there are my two doors I'll decide which ones are these or which and just label them and then put two together like that and I can work out my rails for the rails I've got a ring latch it's got a bar on it and I've also got like a, a rim lock padlock that's going to join the two doors together when I put this ring latch on I know that they have to go about there you know the sort of rosette plate backing plate and I don't want to be drilling through my tenon so I think I'm going to I want the handle up about a metre high, standard. So I think I'm going to drop the bottom rail just enough so that I don't have to do that. But that means that the rosette doesn't go on to a cross member timber behind. Might not have any choice about that. It's only a half inch hole for a spindle. 
Mm. Tea time. Have a think about that. So 1675 I've got. So I'll just put the two heads together. 1675, 8mm off there. Small gap there. And it's off a little bit there. I think that'll be alright. Like I say, I can bip a piece off the door, off the side of the doors if I need to. I am tempted to make this little slave door a little bit smaller though. The handle. I've got no choice. I'm gonna have to go through the through the tenon. I think. Anyway, eight ninety for that one. Cut the cross rails. So I'll put eight ninety there and measure off that. That's about there. I've got 705. Like I say, these are a bit tight. So I might take a fraction off that and just make that. Eight ninety. I might just reduce them to 700 mil. I'll trim a little bit off that door, off that header. And so I cut those at 700. And if I get that flush there, get that tight up against there, just got to trim the head down. Put a little bit of saw brush. When I was trimming these, there was a little piece like that. It fell in there, and I just reached in to get it. I just touched the blade with my knuckle. That was stupid. This saw when you cut doesn't always flick up like that. And quite easily just stop like that. See? The guard doesn't always flick down completely. Luckily the blade was just coming to a stop. And these rails, rather than putting up a stop, I'm just cutting them both at the same time. I've cut it fractionally longer than I need. This time I'll trim it to the exact length. Just like that. Right, so there I've got two styles, two heads and two rails for each one. And these timbers aren't all the same thickness. I haven't planed them so it's just straight off the shelf stuff. So I've numbered them just so I know which legs go which head. Right, so I've clamped all them together. Flush at the top. That's a meter high, centre. And bottom rail, I like to leave a couple of inches up. Match board will fly down at the bottom. And I'm just going to put a, a brace in like that. I'm just going to stick a domino through. Because like I say, I'm trying to make these quick and cheap. I'm not going to house it in. Stick a domino through there. And I might be able to get a coach bolt or a screw or something up through there. Same there. So I'll just put a 100mm domino in there. I'm going to put it on the adjustment. I think. I left them overnight to dry. I had a look last night going through the clips that I made. And for some reason it didn't film me cutting the dominoes. The 
phone updated, so whether that had anything to do with it, I don't know. Either lost them or it didn't actually film them. I haven't got clamps this long, so this glue expands so to stop it pushing the joints apart. I put these star dowels in. They're aluminium, so it's not easy to get them in sometimes without bending them. See, I creased that one a little bit. It went in, but a little bit of a crease on it. These top joints I made big 40 mil dowels to go in like that. I made some 12 mil ones to go in similar there. Uh, I've got to get some. I've got to cut some timbers. I'm going to make them about the same thickness as this to go around here. And quite often I'd buy an extra length of this and rip it down, make it square. But the wood was a bit crap, it was all bent and twisted, even these pieces were a bit bent. Um, so I'm going to cut down some 2 by one that I've got, just make it about 30mm thick, it should be thick enough that way, but I'll make it the same as the pieces that came off. Here, there's a depth gauge and there's a little arm under there if I set that so it doesn't doesn't lift that needle see that goes up and down like that if I set that like that this 2 by one that I'm going to play should come out similar size Very close, if not exact, it'll do. I'm using this one, it's Everbuild this one, I don't have a particular brand, depends what comes off the shelf, it's Lumberjack, Timbermate, they're all pretty much the same, it all depends on weather conditions, a particular house, how people treat the timber. So I'm just going to blather some around here before I put the boards on. Doesn't cost much this, so you can just get plenty on. 
and all this timber will need some weather protection. This is only like antibacterial, anti-fungus, whatever. Just to help it stop rotting this. I'll stand that to one side while I do this one. And you see here I've got a knot, but it's clear on the other side. There was a big knot there that I cut out when I ripped it, but I knew I'd be able to hide that one. So I'll put this to one side, do this one, then I can get some boards on. You just saw me put a single line of glue down the middle, but you can see squeezing out so there's plenty behind there right I've left them long I'll just run the track saw across that bottom end and they always stand up I'll I'll put a little chamfer on this edge to copy that that will sit down just and this is off the shelf timber I could have planed those rails down but you can see it's three or four mil those rails start getting a bit thin then and I'm short here see there's, I wouldn't get boards that are going to fit exactly what I'll do is measure that distance there that's about 130 mil and I'll rip one of these boards down you see this one's got big knots here so I'll rip that one down to half of that so that's one I've just ripped down just round the edge along the planer just to clean it up a little bit, get rid of any steps that might be in the saw marks. And now, I've given each one just a couple of mil for expansion. I can sit this one on. And I'll cut it to that. And then we'll run the planer along it. That'll open these up a little bit because I think they want just a little bit more than that. But I'll cut that one down. And I can't be too fussy about these boards. There's knots and things all over them. And that one there's twisted to hell. There's our we we'll get a chamfer cut along these edges, along the top there. I'm using a, just a little chamfer cutter with a bearing. And these boards aren't flat. They're not too bad, but they're cut sometimes. And it's difficult to get an Anzac line, but it'd be near enough. Mm -hmm. Be okay. I've right, we'll just nailed that first one on. And yeah, I'm going to put some across there, even though I've allowed for expansion, I'm going to glue that cover on. Same down there, same across there, right across the head. I've done loads of these, and I've glued them on, and I've never had any problem. Expansion with a glue normally is to stop the board splitting. To be honest, I prefer them stuck on, and them split, rather than falling off, because somebody's kicked them through or the nails have deteriorated or something these are galvanized ring nails anyway but i'll get all these on now i'll glue the other edge on and nail it and then i'll space all these out and as i fix one in i have to tap the bottom fix the top tap the next one
Right, I doubled the nails up on the bottom because they're going to get banged occasionally. Straight across the middle I just put a single row. Might stick another one in there. And across the top I risked it and just used the nail gun. Sometimes it splits but these boards feel very, very slightly damp. I'll get this up out of the way. I'm going to run the router around here, just round this edge off. Same on the other side, just run it around everything. I'll get this up out of the way, get the big one done. And this is a big one, and it's pretty much the same. I'll measure that distance, divide it in half, rip that one down to that half, and I can lose that big knot that's there. And then rip one to fit in there, leaving a little bit of space for expansion of the boards. Uh, I've cut a slight slope on the top, help the rain shade off and I've rounded all the edges all round I'm going to spray it with some treatment This is a A&I gun, it's about 24 quid, quite cheap It's about 1.5 mil nozzle I think it says I've already put two coats on there, so I'll flip it over, put another two on the other side. Leave it about 20 minutes in between, just let it soak in a bit. This is only a, a rock preservative, so it'll need some weather treatment, some sort of UV treatment on it, but that's up to the customers to do that. 